Hi, I'm a drawing that watches stuff. And it's kind of funny that this week I saw a movie that was also followed with another big Hyrule fantasy bra. Good timing, I guess. Have you ever felt that there was a movie that did something so well that it only feels disheartening when it doesn't end as well as it begins? Now, to start off my review on a complete downer, but the sequel to DreamWorks' hit How to Train Your Dragon felt like that to me. Two thirds of the film works so well that it makes the other third seem very mediocre. So much so that it changes my outlook on the film from great to okay at best. Which is a big shame because I wanted to like this movie so much more. So let's talk about which parts worked and which ones didn't. We go back to Burke five years later where we see Hiccup all grown up. The town is more accepting of dragons as common house pets. Hiccup wants to explore the world along with his dragon Toothless to discover more species in unknown lands. However, he comes across dragon smugglers who reveal that there are more dragon riders in the world like Hiccup and his friends. They also reveal a villain named Drago, which is probably one of the most overused villain names I have ever known in existence, wants to take control of the land by building a dragon army himself. By trying to persuade Drago to let go of his conquering ambitions, Hiccup encounters another ally along the way, who happens to be his long lost mother. Rather than grow angry for finding out she's abandoned her family for years, she convinces Hiccup that she was doing what he was doing for 20 years, which is training, finding new species, and new lands for the endangered dragons. I think you can tell which parts of the movie I liked more than the rest. The first two thirds of the film are fantastic. I love the character development, finding out what happens to the world from the first film expanded on in the last five years. Especially seeing characters growing older, wiser, or just changing their behaviors in general. Hiccup develops more technology that includes a badass fire lightsaber used for training the dragons, which satisfies all my geeky desires until we see Star Wars return. Sure, not all the characters hit a bullseye, as I think the film spends too much time on one of the twins from the first film, which personally got annoying. To me, it was verging on that traditional DreamWorks humor that's never funny, but possibly included because someone in production thought it was funny to include, but I digress. Either way, the animation is gorgeous, giving the film a truly visual look of a high rule fantasy world that embraces the fantasy element more than the first film did. I love how Hiccup's relationship with Toothless is expanded, as well as his relationship with his father, which gets developed more as these films go. And above all else, I love Hiccup's mother. Considering that it's been 20 years where she's barely seen any humans and only interacted with these dragons, she moves like one, makes armors resembling dragons, and even talks like a dragon, it's an ace in a hole casting Kate Blanchett in this role because you know she's going to take it 120% seriously, despite whatever she's in. So with all these great characters, tone, story, and visuals, what makes the last act disappointing enough to make me change my opinion? Well, one is the villain. We spend all this time building him up as this evil dragon trainer. The once he shows up, he feels like any generic villain. Added on the fact that the freaking trailer spoiled what he looked like going into this film. Yeah, the whole movie was building him up, and to see him be yet another viking with world domination on his mind, it felt pretty underwhelming. There's also a strange casting choice of having Digimon Hanso voice him. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Digimon Hanso, but I could not match his voice with the character, especially since he's so distinct in his voice. Another thing that annoyed me was the pacing. Looking back on the first film, we have the film take place over the course of a couple of weeks. Much like The Dark Knight Rises, we have all this action, new plot development, and resolution happen over the course of a day or two. Especially with one development, which I won't spoil, happens so fast and is supposed to have a large climactic feel to it, just comes across as rushed and having little less of an impact on me. This was like supposed to be the big Luke finding out his father was Darth Vader moment. Or that moment when Harvey Dent becomes Two-Face in The Dark Knight. Once it happens, the movie literally drops the ball and it was really hard for me to like it as much as I did earlier. However, I can say what this movie will appeal to, and that's the geek crowd. Not to be stereotypical, but let's be honest. Your main character is an introverted engineer. The dragons have a Miyazaki influenced design. Giant monster fights ensue. A Game of Thrones style battle with characters from Game of Thrones exist. So I can understand why people would fall in love with this movie. But for now, it isn't fair to say that it's a great geek movie versus a great movie on its own right. It's like how people will go out of it saying, it's a good kids movie. I mean, what the hell is that supposed to mean? What about a good movie in general? If this were a 10 point scale, I would have given it a 6 or a 7. 
And contrary to what most people will think, it has nothing to do with my bias against DreamWorks as a studio. I did watch this with an open mind. If that's not enough to convince you, then I apologize. And who knows, maybe my opinion will change. How to Train Your Dragon 1 was a movie that kinda grew on me and actually made me change my opinion after more viewings. This might apply for this film as well. Now as I said before, there is a lot to love about it. However, for now, the last act really killed that flow from me. 